Hello, Sawyer here, and welcome to Real Numbers, the weekly show that discovers math through the analysis of real-world problems. This week, we continue our exploration of probability problems with a question about traffic arrangements. In the busy city center of Metropolis, exactly half of the cars are yellow taxis. You're trying to catch a taxi with your friend who is superstitious and will only ride in a taxi that is both directly behind another taxi and directly in front of another taxi. If a stoplight in Metropolis has six cars stopped at it, and each car is a taxi independently with probability one half, what is the probability that there are three yellow taxis in a row at the traffic light? Now let's solve the problem from last week's episode. If you haven't seen it yet, there's a link in the description of this video. We wanted to know how likely it would be that we'd get at least two full nights of sleep while dog-sitting Fluffy over five nights, when Fluffy wakes us up two-thirds of nights. One approach to this problem is to take each night one at a time and keep track of the running totals of probabilities of how many full nights of sleep we've had. We call this the computational approach, since it requires calculation and bookkeeping. Let's draw up a table for our calculations. The column we are in will be the number of nights that we've dog-sat. And the row that we are in will be the number of full nights of sleep we've gotten. The entry in the table will be the probability that after the column number of nights, we've gotten the row number of full nights of sleep. So for example, this entry will be the chance that after two nights, we got disturbed both nights. And this is the entry that we are solving for. Because we want to know whether we got at least two undisturbed nights, we can lump all cases of two or more full nights together and only worry about these three rows. The first column is easy. If we've dog sat zero nights, we've of course gotten zero full nights of sleep. So all the probability in this column lands in the first row. That means we put a one here and the other entries are zero. Now we can compute the effect of the first night, which will let us compute the second column. Two thirds of the time, we get disturbed, so our count of full nights of sleep isn't changed. And one third of the time, Fluffy doesn't bother us, so we increment our row, that is, we increase it by one. Let's draw arrows representing the different outcomes, labeled with their probabilities. To follow a particular arrow, we need to both be in the starting entry and then follow the arrow. Since this is the and of two independent events, the probability of following an arrow is the product of the probability of being in the starting entry times the label of the arrow. That gives us that our second column should be labeled with a two-thirds chance of being in the first row and a one-third chance of being in the second row. If we fill in one more column, I think we'll get the hang of this computational method. We'll again draw arrows out of all the entries from the second column that have non-zero probability. Then to end up in the top entry, where we've gotten zero full nights of sleep in two nights, we can only follow this arrow from the top entry of the previous column. That top entry has probability two-thirds, and the arrow has probability two-thirds. And we multiply these together, since the nights are independent, so we get four ninths. Now notice the second row has two incoming arrows. This entry represents the state of having dog sat two nights and gotten one full night's rest. We could do this in two different ways. First, by getting the full night's rest the first night and then having Fluffy bother us the second night. The probability of that happening is this entry, one third, times two thirds, the probability of this arrow. A second way we could do this is by being disturbed the first night, so being in this box, and then multiplying it by the one third chance of following this arrow, representing Fluffy sleeping through the night the second night. These two results are two ninths, and since they are disjoint ways of arriving at this state, we add them to determine the entry, which is 4 ninths. Finally, the third row only has one arrow coming into it, and the previous state's probability is 1 third, as is the probability of following this arrow, so we multiply to get 1 ninth in the last entry. A quick check that we haven't made a mistake with our math. The sum of all the entries in this column is 4 ninths plus 4 ninths plus 1 ninth, which is 1. That's great, because the sum of the probabilities of all possible outcomes after two nights should be one. Okay, let's continue with filling in the fourth column. We can fill in these arrows. Now to finish with that method, we can continue filling in the table until we get the values in the fifth column. But instead of watching me plugging and chugging up there, 
let's look at finding another solution to the problem. Combinatorics is the mathematical field of counting. No, I'm not making that up. There really is an entire field of math dedicated to getting better and better at counting things. Turns out there are some pretty clever enumeration methods. And since this second solution employs some of them, we will call it our combinatorial solution to the problem. We want to find the probability we get at least two full nights of sleep. By the rules of probability, this must be one minus the probability of not getting at least two full nights of sleep, or one minus the probability of getting at most one full night of sleep. The two disjoint ways of getting at most one night of sleep is to get exactly one or exactly zero full nights of sleep. So our ultimate answer is one minus the probability of getting exactly zero full nights of sleep plus the probability of getting exactly one night of sleep. Now we can compute each of these probabilities by counting up the ways that they can happen. First, there is exactly one way that we get no nights of sleep. Fluffy bothers us every night. Since each night has a two-thirds chance of this happening independently, the total probability that this happens is two-thirds to the fifth, or 32 over 243. Second, how many ways can Fluffy let us sleep exactly one full night? Well, that's just the number of ways to choose one night out of the five different nights of dog sitting, so five. The probability of each of these happening is the product of two-thirds, the probability we get woken up, four times, and one-third, the probability we are undisturbed, one time. This product is the same no matter which day Fluffy leaves us alone, because multiplication is commutative. This allows us to collect the sum of all five terms together. The probability of exactly one night of sleep is five times two-thirds to the four times one-third, or 80 over 243. Thus, our final answer is just one minus 32 over 243 plus 80 over 243, or 131 over 243, about 0.5391. So slightly more than half the time, we will get our needed beauty rest. Let's check back in on the computational solution. Plus, oh, another one third times 33 over 81. So that's 131 over 243, or about 0.5391. Would be nice if we had a separate way to check our answer. Anyway, good luck with the problem of the week. Six cars, each of which has an independent one-half probability of being a taxi, are parked in a row. What is the probability that there are three consecutive taxis? Submit your answers and explain your reasoning with text, a photo of your work, or a file. I'll see you next week with another probabilistic problem. <laughs>